I've got a word from the Lord, and as many of you know or should know by now, this year of 2023 is the 75th church anniversary of the New Bethel Church here in Kansas City, Kansas. And God has given us a theme for this year, the year of abundant blessings. Anybody ready to be blessed? And I hope that I'll share with you this morning uh, what the Lord put in my spirit as it relates to New Bethel and this being the 75th anniversary and how it all comes together as our year of abundant blessings. You will see that today's message is more uh, apologetic. Now, apologetic in religious terms is a discipline of defending the position that you take through a systematic argumentation with the scriptures. It's presenting a logical position as opposed to an emotional one. When you speak to stir up someone's emotions, what you might hear might not always come together, but you're just so hyped. You just go off on a tangent. But with an apologetic message, you have to listen and use your mind and see how everything fits together. That's what I'm going to do today. So you've got to pay attention, and you've got to listen, and then understand where we're going. I want to start first with the scripture uh, from Deuteronomy chapter 28, using the message version, uh, verse number one. The Bible says this, if you listen obediently, to the voice of God, somebody say obediently. I cannot stress that. In this time and season, you must be obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. Irregardless of how illogical or if it doesn't even make sense to you, if God says it and he's confirmed it, you've got to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. So let me start again. If you listen obediently to the voice of God, your God, and heartily obey all his commandments that I command you today, God, your God, will place you on high, high above all the nations of the world. And here it is, verse number two, the Bible says, and all these blessings will come down on you and spread out beyond you because, what? You have responded to the voice of God, your God. I want everybody to say it, because you have what? Responded to the voice of God, your God. Today's message is simply entitled, The Year of Abundant Blessings. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, God, continually for your mercies and your grace. And as we sit to hear the words of life, let there be no distraction. But God, even speak to us individually through this message. We're standing on your word this morning. We're acting by faith and believing you. And there's someone here today, God, you're dealing with to make a change in their life. Help them to understand that they're in the right place at the right time. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I've learned personally over the years 
because I've seen it and I've experienced it. But we understand through the scriptures that there is significance in both time and place. You have to be at the right time in the right place. You could be at the right time, but you might not be in the right place. <laughs> or you might be in the right place, but you're not there at the right time. And then woe unto those that are not there on time or in place. But with God, it is so important that you understand the significance or importance of being at the right time in the right place. We learn from the scripture, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, that states, to everything there is a Season, here it is, and a time for every purpose where? Under heaven. Under heaven. Now that's significant because everything, there's a season, there's a, 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 a specific season that you have to go through. But when it comes to purpose, there's a specific time. And why under the heaven? Because when you're above or in heaven, time does not exist. Time is only relegated to we who are on the earth. That's why eventually uh, the angel we learn in Revelation, once he's going to have his foot on the sea and foot on the land and declare time no more. Because time really is a gift to mankind to get your stuff together. Oh, God, I feel like preaching this morning. So you can fool around and think you've got everything made and just be stopped by the police. And your time is up. Hallelujah. And we certainly want to pray for that family as we watch the horrendous beating that took place. But I'm emphasizing to you that we have to understand the importance of time. It's a gift. And with time, there is a purpose assigned for you. Ooh, glory to God. And in addition to time, remember, the, the significance is that you also have to be in the right place. See, being in position is so relative to God. You remember when uh, Noah was preaching and the Lord told him to build an ark. The salvation was for everyone who was in the ark. Many people laughed at him. It's not going to rain. But they had a specific time to get in the right place. <laughs> Woo! And after the time was up, what happened? The door of the ark was closed. And only those in that place were saved. Remember when Israel, the children of Israel, were coming out of Egypt and the final curse was given that the Lord declared the firstborn male of everything in the land will die. But those that are in the house that are covered by the blood even when the death angel comes, if he sees the blood, 
God, he's going to pass over the house. Being in the right place is just as important as the time. So one of the saints said, I, I got I to gotta go to CVS right quick. I'm, I'm going to run out the house because I need some cough drops. And then when the death angel came to that house and passed over it, come on, even though the person's heart was right, if they weren't in the right place, they would have died. And on the other hand, if one of the Egyptians just happened to stop by and knocked on the door and said, uh, can I come in for a minute? I want to see what's going on. And he got in the place. When the death angel came to the house and saw the blood on the lintels of the door place, he, the death angel would have passed by. The Egyptian would have been saved. Why? Because he was in the, at the, whoo, glory to God. You're going to see that the significance of this message is for every one of us today being in the right place at the right time. Oh, and that last illustration means that even if you're not necessarily a member if you're in the right place at the right time, you get the same blessings. And I think we can illustrate more about being in the right place than when there was the prophet who needed to be sustained and the Lord spoke to ravens and said, go to this longitude and this latitude and drop some food. The prophet had to be in the right place. The scripture says, uh, verse Kings 17, 3 and 4, he told the prophet, get away from here, turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you what? There. See, you have to understand, your blessing is tied to both time and place. Stay with me. Now, a couple weeks ago, I preached the message, insignificant to some, but significant to God. While some might view you as insignificant, God still sees you as significant. Now, we're talking about Deacon Garland and being in the right place, right time. So, while some might seem New Bethel Church as being insignificant, because we're on the Kansas side, or we're in the hood, or because maybe our congregation might predominantly be of those that are uh, of color. Mm. And while some might consider us insignificant, maybe have looked down on us, laughed at us, maybe through history have seen things, some things happen and almost saw the dissolution, but. Uh, while some might consider us insignificant, I'm here to declare that we're still significant. And there's significance of, look, this place at this time. Woo! And as I begin to share, and I'm not going to be long, 
You have to understand that you're in a place of blessings. Now, if you don't mind, just look at someone and share with them, you are in a place of blessings. <laughs> Woo! All right. And you got to realize your blessing is just the fact that you're sitting next to somebody who's blessed. Oh, I'm blessed because I'm in your presence. I wish someone would hear me. There's significance in who you even run with. If you're with somebody who's anointed, the anointing has got to run on you. And consider the synergism that is created when Anointing is sitting next to anointing and sitting next to anointing, sitting next to anointing and sitting next to anointing. The multiplication of significance of the anointing creates such a powerful, uh, powerful energy that we don't know what is going to happen. Now, the significance of both time and place can be observed through he who was considered the father of the faithful. Stay with me. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 says this, By faith, Abraham Obeyed. Somebody shout obeyed. Remember that's the underlying principle. Obeying the voice of God. By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And when he went out, not knowing where he was going. Sometimes God will tell you to do something that you don't even understand. <laughs> Lord, what are you saying? Now, as I shared, I think, a couple of weeks ago when the Lord told me to go to Ukraine, and yes, many were fearful we were, my colleague and I were walking into an area that is presently still under a uh, conflict of war. I was never fearful for my natural life because I heard and felt the move of God to go. The Lord will impress upon you to do some things that might to others look dangerous or seem crazy. But God wants to use you as an instrument to fulfill his will. That's why obedience to God's word is so important. I don't believe you were just elected to serve in a position. But being tied to this place, there's a purpose for when you're there adjudicating issues that maybe through your presence, God will save somebody. You're not at a school teaching kids even when they're getting on your last nerve. And I was a teacher and I know about that. Sometimes when kids act up and you gotta say, come up Holy Ghost, come up. <laughs> come up 
love Holy Ghost? I remember I one time lo almost lost it. This, this, the, the, he was like a young teenager. He going to challenge me. And it was just one of those days. You know, some of us, we all have one of those days. And he had the nerve to get up and challenge me. Out of nowhere, I said, boy, I'll throw you out that window. With my Holy Ghost filled self. He sat down. But I hope you understand what I'm saying. Every one of you in here has significance to God. And while others might think you insignificant and you even take on that persona, my life really has no meaning. The devil is a lie. I'm here to declare unto you that you have significance just like Ananias who was a brother in the church but God used him to set up the entire New Testament through the Apostle Paul. Just your words, just your presence, just you laying hands on somebody can make a change for eternity. God. Some might even have to, oh God, I hear you. Some might even have to go through the, the prison system. But you are there for a rendezvous with somebody who will you'll change their destiny from hell to heaven. When I talk about abundant blessings, yes, I'm talking about natural things, but I'm also talking about spiritual blessings. You're going to see yourself used by God in ways you never imagined uh, that the Lord would consider using this frail body. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you yield yourself and you have a desire, God will use you in such a way it'll blow your mind. And I'm not talking about everybody getting up here to preach but just your presence in praying can turn nations. Woo! When you stop at a truck stop, hallelujah, and you just go in to the truck stop place, don't you know you're bringing the presence of God? Please understand that even when you go to a restaurant, you know, sometimes, listen, listen, you might think I'm crazy, but you want it so badly to go to that Cascones or whatever it's called, restaurant, Sheldon, where they got your hot sauce just for you. I won't tell it. And you got all the mothers there. Even though Mother Fleming wanted to go to the buffet, but you brought her along anyway. Listen, listen. I'm, I'm being a little humorous, but I want you to understand. When you go in, it's filled to capacity. And there's no seats, and you can't get in. Even though that was what you had an appetite for, God really wanted you to go to another restaurant. So instead of getting all upset, follow the Spirit. So he sends you to Nick and Jake's. Where immediately they've got room for you. And you walk in and take your seat. I wish somebody hear what I'm saying. Your purpose was not at Cascones, but you were on a divine assignment at Nick and Jake's that when the waitress came to you, you were to deliver a word to that person and let them know, baby, everything.
everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. That's why you got to be friendly with everybody. Because maybe instead of them serving you, God really intended for you to serve them. So instead of getting all ugly because they didn't bring out your food like you wanted to, you've got to reflect the spirit of God and show mercy and grace just like somebody showed it to you. I feel like preaching this morning. So, 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 so. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Look, and he went out not knowing where he was going. We find that he is the son of Terah. Terah took his son Abraham, his grandson Lot, and his daughter-in-law. They went out with them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan. We read that in Genesis chapter 11. And on the way to the land of Canaan, somebody shout Canaan, which was the promised land. Terah had the responsibility of getting, of getting his family to the promised land. But the Bible says that when he got to Haran, he dwelt there. The Lord, don't miss this, the Lord intended for Terah, the father of Abram, to take his family to Canaan, which we know as the promised land. But on the way, he got comfortable in a place that God did not want him to dwell in. See, through life, you will come across areas that you are comfortable with, that even the adversary will make comfortable for you, but it's not where God wants you to end up. That's why you just can't follow the signs of everybody else. You've got to hear what is God telling you. Now look, 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 stay with me. I'm building my case. Since Terah, the father, would not take his family to Canaan, the promised land, he ended up dwelling in another place, and guess what? He died. Ooh, what a horrible position to die in a place that God did not intend for you to be. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. Because as long as you have life, you have hope. That's why the adversary strives to get a person to commit suicide. He recognizes if you will get to the right place at the right time, you will be so powerful for the kingdom of God. So he does everything he can to cause you to feel as if there's no need for life. The devil is alive. Because as long as you have life, there's hope. Heron, where the, the location that Terah ended up, was not his ultimate destination. I believe that he could have changed and still pursued 
going to Canaan. But he got so comfortable in his place that he refused to move. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. So what do we find then? When Terah died, the Bible says, now, uh, verse number, chapter 12 of Genesis, verse number 1, now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, what to a land that I will show you. Now, 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 don't miss this. Uh, Elder Pastor Relford, don't miss this. Why did the Lord have to share with Abram the land that he's supposed to go to? Because Tira, the father, failed to tell his sons the ultimate destination for this family is to be in Canaan. What a horrible position to be in when your family has failed to provide the example of holiness and right living and how you should go. Now, now, that's why I am so upset with families who even fail to bring their children to church. So we've got a generation growing up who we love to play with at the family reunion. Kids we like to see when we gather together for Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, and even funerals. But no one has taken them aside and say, listen, boy, listen, darling girl, I want to make sure you understand there is a God whose name is Jesus that you must give your life to. We cannot fail as parents, as grandparents, to be the example, but also we got to drag some of them to church. Even though they might not want it, thank God somebody dragged me. Put in me at least the rudiments of the foundation of Christianity. We're so filled with agnosticism and atheism that we have left the principles of the doctrine of Christ. And our kids don't even know basic uh, biblical stories because they're void. So what happens when they face the adversary? They don't know to call on the name of Jesus. Never been taught, put that name in the atmosphere. Never understand that there's power in the anointing. Glory to God. I'm talking about even kindergartners. They've got to understand there's power in the name of Jesus. Tira failed. So, because it was the intent of God to get this family to a place a blessing. Stay with me. He said, Abram, get out your country. Get from your family. Get out your father's house and go to a place that I'll show you. See, when God has an anointing on your life, 
you'll sometimes have to let some family members go. I didn't say you got to stop loving them or praying for them or even interacting with them. But when you have been anointed by God and consecrated for work, you cannot still be stuck in what things used to be. I hope I'm helping somebody today. Yes. The significance in hearing the voice of God. Now, 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 stay with me. I'm, 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 coming, I'm almost coming to the end. I'm almost there. Because there's significance, as I mentioned, for this place at this time. And it's tied to Abraham. This is what the Lord revealed to me. And when I was beginning the, the announcement that this is the year of abundant blessing, I said, Lord, oh, I'm not challenging you, but can you just reveal, open up, share with me how, what is the significance? And he began to talk about time and place. Place and time. Tyrone, glory to God. It's not coincidental that you're sitting up in here right now. Hear me. You might have thought you were here to get Mia. But that's just a side blessing. Why would somebody hear me? God has something specific for you. You just did not come up here the other few weeks ago and say, I want to become a minister, uh, a member here, and you're already a minister of the gospel of Christ. God is dealing with you individually. And in a few minutes, we're going to be consecrating leaders and elders in the church. It's not coincidental. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some have left, but and even some who are consecrating today mention, I might want to leave. This was some time ago. And I might, I'm thinking the Lord is, I said, no, that's not it. Mm. Uh, listen, I won't stop a person from going if that's what they intend, but I want to make sure everyone knows the time and the place. The Lord told Abraham, get out of your country. Get from where you're comfortable at. Get from your family. <laughs> Woo, Mary, you hear what I'm saying? Oh, God, you got family. All your family is everywhere else but Kansas City, Kansas. I know about it. When the Lord brought us here, there was no one here. I remember when the Carters came, two little children, but the Lord said, move. No family here. Everyone, all family, in-laws, cousins, everybody, another location geographically. But God said, you move. You've got to be obedient to what God tells you to do. No, everybody's not going to understand. How come you're not coming to Mass anymore? Oh, glory to God. I haven't seen you in Mass and I don't know when. Stay with me. your country. Get from your family. Wait, Lord, you want me to leave my cousins? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> 
We don't die. We multiply. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. Peggy, they will not understand. They'll think, oh, now you think you so much. You, you, mm, you think you so holy. Mm, you can't even be with us anymore. They drunk, and they, they, you can't even drink with us anymore. Listen, they'll get so ugly, they'll start cursing you as a family member. Who the so-and-so you think you are? You so-and-so. Look at you, you so-and-so. Get out from your family. Get out from your father's house. That means leave your siblings. Leave your parents. Hallelujah. John, a uh, 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 family will think you're supposed to take over this church. Wait a minute. I, I'm not feeling that from the Lord. See, I know what I'm talking about. When, when, when uh, uh, Angela's dad made his transition, he was a pastor and the founder uh, of a beautiful church. I think it was paid for greater grace. No, uh, it was it? Hmm? Grace Gospel Temple, St. Charles, Missouri. Ooh, nice facility. Land. Even had a parsonage on the building. And Angela, the daughter, married a preacher. Coming from Mount Calvary. Under the direction of Bishop Norman L. Wagner. It looked like that was the place where I could be. But I never felt the move of God that that was my final destination. Don't always move where others want you to go. Don't always act upon others who are setting something up for you. Because even though it might look the perfect setting, if God's not with you, you cannot succeed. And it was years later that God brought me here in 2009 to a place I had no recollection of. But you've got to be obedient. Somebody shout obedient to the voice of God. And look, look, it, 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 and, and, and the Lord said to Abram, if you leave and go to a land that I will show you, in verse number two, verse number three, he said, I will make you a great nation and I will what? Bless you. you just listen to God, if you're just obedient to God's voice, I, the Lord, will bless you. And when God blesses you, that's the favor of God. It's more than money. It's more than position. It's more than prestige. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, if you're obedient, I will bless you. I hear the Lord speaking to somebody today. Hallelujah. Others won't realize what's going on. Others will think you're crazy. How are you joining that church? Why are you going there? Why are you doing this? Why are you submitting yourself? Because God said so. And if God said so, even if everyone else leaves, uh, even if my own family leave, uh, I wanted you to stay. But God's telling me my blessing is tied to this place at this time. And I refuse. I love you, but I can't leave my blessing. I can't.
cannot leave where God told me to go. I was reluctant. I didn't want to come immediately. I just kept coming as a visitor. But every time I came, the Holy Ghost was knocking me all up in my head, telling me this is where you belong. Why are you waiting so long? Give up, give up, yield to the voice of God and submit yourself. I don't care who's left. I don't care who's trying to get in your ear. You've got to listen to what God is telling you. Oh, Shabbat Oh, I wish somebody just put a worship in the atmosphere right now. Put a praise in the atmosphere right now. Somebody give God glory. People will hurt you. People will disappoint you. Those that you put your trust in will let you down. But the thing about it, God will never leave you. He'll be with you through thick and thin. When you're up, when you're down, the Spirit of the Lord will still be there to encourage you. I'll be there when you can't make it yourself. I'll pick you up and carry you. We all got to admit at some point in time, God had to carry us because we was kicking, we was fighting, but the Lord said, no, I can't let you go. I won't let you go. I, I need you. I want to bless you. You're tied to the purpose of the from the beginning of this world. I bless you and I'll make your name great. What does that mean? Ooh. Some of us had a bad name bad reputation. Oh, but God said, if you come to me, I'll change everything around. I'll change you from an addict to a believer, from an alcoholic to a lover, from one who is filled with pride to one who has humility. I'll change your name from adulterer, whoremonger, to a lover of Christ. I'll change your name. From a liar to a truth teller. <laughs> Hallelujah. From a cursor to a blesser. From a gambler to he who trusts in God. I'll make your name great, which means that you will have a reputation. I, I don't care what your past was, but they'll say that person has changed. That's why we sing that song, a change, a change has come over me. I, I don't know how it happened, but I was in the right place at the right time. God dealt with me, and the next thing I know, I was drawn to the altar. And I finally just said, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I never liked Bishop Brady anyway. He think he's so much. Honey, be where God, you, you ain't got to like me. We ain't got to have lunch together. I love you anyway. 
because I got to love you. And guess what? You got to love me. We all getting there together. I'll make you a great nation. I'll bless you and make your name great. Here it is. And then you shall what? You'll be a blessing. Abundant blessings mean you'll have enough to bless somebody else. It's not about you hoarding whatever you receive. But as you receive, you got to freely give to somebody else. Hallelujah. You cannot make this if you got a stingy spirit. This is my, uh, well, this is my uh, cookie or whatever it was. That... No, 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 no. When God blesses you, you've got to be willing to bless somebody else. I told the saints yesterday in the business session, as I feel led, one day, one week, one month, I don't know, God is going to have us, each one of us individually, go out and just bless somebody we don't know. Go to somebody and just put a $100 bill in their hand. They'll look at this and say, what's this? The Lord told me to bless you. Will somebody hear me? Next time you're at the Starbucks, tell them I'm paying it forward. I'm paying the order behind me. They said, you know what they ordered? I don't care. I'm paying it anyway. Y'all don't hear me. You was hoping they would say just a cup of coffee. But when you understand the principle, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, as I prepare to conclude, how does this relate to us at this place and at this time? Dear Relaford, I've done all this to build the crescendo to this one verse. Because this is what the Lord shared with me, impressed upon me. How it relates to New Bethel in their 75th anniversary. Brother Parks, time and place. David, time and place. Lisa, time and place. Everything Yolanda shared leads up to this, the year of abundant blessings. It deals with Abram's obedience. Somebody shout obedience. Here it is, my last verse. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him and Lot went with him. And Abram was Abram was how old? New Bethel is celebrating what anniversary? Time and place. Seven. Who here is 75 years old? Anyone here 75? Stand up, Janice. Janice is 75 years old. Abram was at that age 
when the Lord told him, get out of your country, get out of your family, and go to a place that I will show you. New Bethel is about to embark on a new journey. This is why this is the year of abundant blessings because as Abraham had stepped out at 75, being in this place means, hallelujah, we're about to be blessed. Deacon Nunn, as Pastor Summer said, Bethel's going to be on the map. Not for personal pride, but when 75 years ago, when she stepped out by faith and established this work, her and her sister, and just a few others with her, the Lord has grown this ministry to now 2023 is the year of abundant blessing. Somebody give God praise in this place today. Hallelujah. I said give God praise. Somebody stand on your feet and give God praise. Hallelujah. Oh God. Every blessing you have, I want to receive it. That's why you've got to be in the right place and at the right time. You may be seated.